There are shocking new details in the investigation of the January 6th insurrection, including a PowerPoint plan for overturning the election and an attempt to intimidate a Georgia election worker that make it very clear Donald Trump and his gang were trying to stage a coup and came very close to succeeding. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As we near the one-year anniversary of the Capitol insurrection, it's important to remember just how terrifying and unpredictable that day was. For example, I remember, instead of taping our show in the afternoon, we postponed it and did it live that night because there was no way of knowing how things were going to end. And we never postpone our tapings because we all have places to be. I have to get home to my family. Shoemaker has to get to the dog track. Jim and John, our security guards, have to get to the dog track. The crew has to get to the dog. It's mostly dog track related. <laughs> I should clarify, they don't go to bed on dogs. They go to rescue them, but I do not think it's going very well. Every morning they show up with fresh scratches and we try to find out what happened. They just say, don't ask. The point is, it's important to remember January 6th and to document each time new details emerge, which incredibly continues to happen, with each piece of new information being more insane than the last. I don't know how it's possible. It's like succession. Just when you think it's getting repetitive, they find a new way to shock you. And by the way, I haven't seen last night's episode yet, so no one spoil it for me. I don't want anyone shouting out plot twists, and I certainly don't want Wally teasing me via cue card. <laughs> Wally, no! Do we have to eat later after Wally made a meal of that? <laughs> the point is, it is now beyond doubt, if there was any to begin with, that Trump and his gang tried to stage a coup to overturn a presidential election. They came incredibly close to pulling it off, and it's very likely they'll try again. In fact, we know Trump would like to try it again because he keeps talking about it, as he did over the weekend at a so-called history tour with disgraced former Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. Had he had the courage to do what Thomas Jefferson did, but a minor version. You know, Thomas Jefferson, he kept Georgia. You know that? He didn't send it back. There was a dispute. Hear ye, hear ye. The great state of Georgia is unable to properly calculate its votes. Thomas Jefferson was sitting where I was, right where Mike. You know what he said? Hear ye, hear ye. We will keep the votes of the great state of Georgia. He didn't send it back to the no. All I wanted, and a lot of people wanted Mike to do, is send that back. I'll say this, he's the only guy I've ever seen do an episode of Drunk History stone cold sober. <laughs> I mean, it's like watching an amnesia patient wander up on stage during a performance of Hamilton. Secretary Jefferson, you have the floor, sir. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> It's frankly hilarious that the only thing Trump seems to know about American history is that people used to say, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> and he probably only knows that from one of those commercials where the owner of a local car dealership dresses up as a founding father for an ad advertising a President's Day sale. Hear ye, hear ye, come on down to ye old Joey Prechicelli ski dealership in Staten Island. These prices are so low, you'll have to two if by land, one if by sea for yourself. By the way, Trump is referencing a debunked theory floated by his supporters that Thomas Jefferson somehow used his power as vice president overseeing the counting of electoral votes in 1800 to make himself president, a theory disproven by, among others, an article with the headline, No, Thomas Jefferson Didn't Rig the 1800 Vote Count. <laughs> it's a real sign of the times how many headlines sound like they should start with a big, old, heavy sigh. <sighs> no. You can't cure COVID with Listerine. <laughs> with all due respect to O'Reilly and Trump, we might as well get our history tour from a gym teacher who had to sub in last minute because the real teacher had a COVID exposure. Who are we doing today, Jefferson? Okay, uh, bear with coach because it's uh, been a while since I cracked open the history books here. <laughs> oh boy, if memory serves, Jefferson ran on two platforms. One, don't let fish fry in the kitchen, and two, don't let beans burn on the grill. And after his presidency, he moved on up to the east side, okay? <laughs> to Monticello, which is what he called his deluxe apartment in the sky. All right, let's do laps! <laughs> By the way... <laughs> while we're talking about it, I just feel like it's worth pointing out that ticket sales for this Trump O'Reilly history tour have been lackluster. Photos of the first event in Sunrise, Florida showed lots of empty seats in the arena, and the South Florida Sun Center reported that many seats remain empty in the cavernous arena, 
The top level was closed and ticket buyers were upgraded to the lower bowl. Yikes, I mean, there was better attendance at my son's kindergarten holiday pageant, or there would have been had it not been canceled due to COVID, which is a real shame because my son would have killed it as a wise man because I've been teaching him my Pacino. Whoa, did somebody order the myrrh? <laughs> Joseph, that kid does not look like you. <laughs> the juxtaposition... <laughs> The juxtaposition here. Jo <laughs> we gotta talk to Joseph. No, Frankincense won't fix it. The juxtaposition here is so revealing because it's a vivid demonstration of how deeply unpopular he is, which is why he needed to stage a coup to stay in power. And we have overwhelming evidence that that's exactly what happened. They did everything they could left no stone unturned, Look for every crack and crevice in our democracy they could possibly find. Their lawyers filed tons of bogus lawsuits and flew around the country trying to get lawmakers to overturn their state's results, forced an unnecessary recount in Georgia that confirmed Biden's win a third time, pressured the governor to call a special session to reject the votes, tried to send alternate slates of electors to D.C., leaned on the Georgia Secretary of State to find enough votes to overturn the result, tried to get the U.S. attorney to announce that there was widespread fraud, tried to get the Justice Department to declare that there was fraud, wrote memo after memo, laying out steps Mike Pence could have taken to overturn the result, called up individual senators to get them to reject the electoral votes, and call Mike Pence into the Oval Office to personally bully him into rejecting the results. Trump tried so many different avenues. He was like the guy at the grocery store during the Christmas rush who keeps switching checkout aisles. You gotta wait, buddy. There's no secret line that's shorter than the other lines. If you don't like lines, go fight with the self-checkout machine like everyone else. Please place your item in the bag. I already bagged it. Please place your item in the bag. It's in the bag! Please wait for assistance. Son of a bitch! <laughs> and when Pence said he didn't have that power, Trump even went so far as to say, but wouldn't it almost be cool to have that power? <laughs> oh, did he? Say that while peeking over his sunglasses, risky business style? <laughs> it's so disorienting for things to be both this dangerous and this dumb at the same time. Like, how are we supposed to process this? It was both a very real coup attempt that continues to pose a clear and present danger to our democracy, and also one of the dumbest things to ever happen. It's like if you found out this guy was a prolific serial killer. <laughs> Like, all the defense would have to do is show that video and say, you really think my client is capable of luring innocent victims into his basement? He tried to cannonball through the ice, and then that guy would say, I would never want to break the ice. That's where the bodies are. <laughs> and the lawyer would be like, shh. He's like, no, you have to keep them there or else they start to smell. <laughs> Wait, it's a fun, we're having fun, look. <laughs> and yet somehow, Things keep getting both more dangerous and dumber. Because in the last few days, we've learned some shocking new details, including the existence of a truly insane PowerPoint presentation that was circling in Trump world, laying out the steps for a coup. Another shocking twist in the January 6th investigation now places a retired U.S. Army colonel at the center of efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The Washington Post reporting Phil Waldron, who circulated a proposal to challenge the election results, visited the White House many times after Joe Biden's victory. And during those visits, he allegedly spoke with former White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, quote, between eight and 10 separate times, worked alongside Trump's legal team and even briefed several members of Congress on the eve of the insurrection about how to stop the election's certification. This is that 38-page PowerPoint presentation, unlike any other PowerPoint you or I have ever seen, I'm sure, that includes options like the President Trump declaring a national emergency to stop that from happening. And the Washington Post is reporting that Waldron personally spoke to Meadows about this PowerPoint. That's right. They wrote down their plans for a coup in a PowerPoint. You know what that means? Congress is going to have to subpoena Clippy. <laughs> That's from our new segment. Jokes from 1995. <laughs> now, famously, Trump never writes anything down, but I guess he forgot to tell his underlings before they started emailing a PowerPoint around detailing their crimes. Even the mafia knows to use code words. If the mafia ever made a PowerPoint presentation, it would say something vague, like plan for the guys at the place to do the thing. <laughs> okay, boss, what's the next slide? There's no more slides. There's just the one slide. 
all of that weren't already insane enough, we also have this bizarre plot twist involving a publicist who tried to pressure a Georgia election worker into publicly confessing the bogus fraud charges. What sure looks like another piece of the Trump coup plot is exposed in Georgia. Bombshell reporting from Reuters. A Kanye West publicist pressured a Georgia election worker to confess to bogus election fraud two days before January 6th. We come to a woman named Ruby Freeman. She is a Georgia election worker. She was smeared by, among others, Donald Trump, who mentioned her name 18 times in that phone call to the Secretary of State. A woman named Trevion Coty showed up at Ruby Freeman's doorstep. She said she was representing a high-profile individual who wanted to help Freeman. What Coty did not reveal is that she was a publicist to Kanye West a Trump ally who himself ran a half-hearted campaign for president in 2020. So she agrees to meet with Kanye's publicist in a safe location, a local police station, where Cutty outlined a threat wherein mysterious figures would show up to Freeman's house and put her and her family in jail if she did not publicly admit to stealing the election for Joe Biden. The president and his gang tried every avenue they could possibly find to stage a coup to overturn an election. They came very close and they'll try again. They tried so many things, even Kanye is apparently involved now, although he legally changed his name, so when Trump introduces him now, he probably says, Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> then a closer look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever if you're watching this online. You can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.